Hey, John. Excuse me, miss. Yes? I'm a lonely guy, wandering the streets of the heartless city on Christmas Eve, looking for a stranger who could bring love into my empty life. I'm sorry, but I'm an unfriendly, removed city dweller, too concerned with our own selfish wants to share any feeling with another person. Oh. Merry Christmas, then. Taxi! Taxi! <sighs> oh, um, excuse me, miss. I'm a lonely guy wandering the streets of the heartless city on Christmas Eve, looking for a stranger who could bring love into my empty life. Yes, well... I'm a disillusioned divorcee who's been used so often. She has deep anti-male feelings and anger that prevent her from giving of herself. I see. Have a merry Christmas, then. Sure. Sure. <laughs> oh, that pretty girl at the crosswalk. Oh, dear. Excuse me, ma'am. Before you cross this busy street, and disappear forever from my life. May I speak with you? Who are you? I'm a lonely guy wandering the streets of the heartless city on Christmas Eve, looking for a stranger who could bring love into my empty life. You are? I am. Well, I'm a lonely woman who gives so easily of herself that she would fall head over heels for the first man she met and do anything he wanted. You are? Wow. Excuse me. I couldn't have overhearing as I came out of this store. Let me introduce myself. I'm an aggressive, shallow, insensitive man with, hey, enough gall to steal a girl from a lonely guy and lure her into a meaningless physical relationship that will satisfy my sexual needs and leave her hurt and distressful of all men. Take me home. <laughs> Goodbye, lonely guy, and good luck. See you later, pal. Merry Christmas to both of you. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm a lonely yeah. guy wandering the streets of the park. Hey, look what I got for my secondary. A bottle of scotch. Oh, you weren't supposed to open your gift yet. Mr. Tyrone said so. I didn't open it. I didn't open it. See, the wrapping's still on. I just removed the bottle cap. <laughs> You keep drinking like this, and Mr. Tyrone will have your job. I know. I'll chuck under the tree what everyone else's present is. You can't unwrap them? Relax. I can tell from the feel. Okay. This here? Oh, yeah. This is this is a golf club, the Jones. Oh, be careful. What if Mr. Tyrone comes? Oh, this, is, this has to be an album. Stop it, Frank. You're mm -hmm. going to get it. This one's shaped like a snow shovel. Oh, and this, this is shaped like Mr. Tyrone's head. Ah! Yes, it's revenge of Saint Nick. He says not a word, but goes straight to his work. Watch him scratch you off his Christmas list. He'll chainsaw those visions of sugar plums right out of your head. Revenge of Saint Nick. Beware of Santa's claws. How oh, are Santa's elves coming with their Christmas toys? Great, Santa. We've made 50 more wagons, 20 dollies, and a dozen shiny new toboggans. Oh, isn't that good? <laughs> You've been working very hard. Thank you, Santa. But, as you know, Christmas is very soon, and, well, you'd make a lot of boys and girls happy if you could work for double shifts. Sixteen hours? And if you do, I'll give you all extra helpings of plum pudding. Okay! <laughs> Everyone whistle while you work. Um, Santa? Yes, Pro? I was just testing out this new toy computer. Oh, that toy computer is going to make some boy or girl very happy. And I did some calculations with this thing. Oh? According to my statistics, there's approximately 1.5312 billion children in the world. Well, aren't you clever? Now, given that figure, we could never make enough toys for all the boys and girls. 
No, not unless we meet our quota of 200 a day. Well, even if we made 800 a day, it would take us 755,212 years to make just one toy for each boy and girl. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> These are not things for little elves to worry their fuzzy heads about. <laughs> Santa has his magic ways. You can make toys with magic. Oh, Santa didn't mean to imply he could uh, make toys with magic, but I don't want to give away all my secrets. You could have just snapped your fingers and made these toys? Well, no, not exactly, of course. And if this is the North Pole, where's the snow? Yeah. Well, now, <laughs> I can explain that. We've all heard about the greenhouse effect on the radio. I'm glad you mentioned the radio. What? The only stations we get are from Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> now, now, little elf. And that's another thing. I'm not an elf. None of us are. <laughs> How can you say that? Because I hooked this into your computer network and discovered that we're really people with pituitary deficiencies that you adopted as children. Ho, 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 ho. You won't be laughing when I hit you with my tiny little hammer. Uh, now admit it, you're not Santa. Of course I'm Santa. No, you're not. You couldn't be. Oh, oh, oh. You drop the phony ho ho oh. so your nose is going to be redder than Rudolph's. Oh, all right, I'm not Santa. Kill, Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. No, 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 wait, 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 let me explain. Yeah, guys, this I want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was born to a poor family. And we never had anything at Christmas, and one day I vowed that I would make other children's Christmases better than mine. I adopted you boys. And I became Santa Claus. Go on. But all I ever wanted to do was make children happy, and if I hurt you doing it, then I'm deeply sorry and I apologize. Oh, well, that's different. That's kind of sad, eh? Except for one thing, lardo. What? According to your computer files, you're the owner and sole proprietor of Shapatinsky's, the largest toy store in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, let me explain kill that. Him. Kill, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. And coming up on the news, bizarre ritual killing in Texas. 43-year-old self-made millionaire Gary Shapatinsky was found stuffed into a sack next to a message written in blood. It read, do not open to Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat. About a week ago, CBC advertised that this show was being taped, and a very famous person heard it and uh, rushed down to CBC headquarters. It was the wrong one. There was about 80 of them in the city, but after about 79 of them, we found the right one and said, I want to be on the Frantic Times, and, and this is a, a fabulous, fabulous honor, and, and the guy's my hero, okay? Anyway... Please welcome, a, a really warm welcome. He's coming in on his white horse right now. Please welcome Canada's own Leonard Cohen. Christmas tree burns like death 
It's beginning. Words turn to clouds with your breath. It's beginning. The plucked wings of turkeys take flight. It's beginning. So stay with me, woman, tonight. Splash in my heart. It breaks apart like skiers hitting trees. The road is long. Can I go on when snow plows? Bury me Another woman Takes me home To soothe my endless woe It's beginning to look a lot Like Christmas Production assistant was Deborah Toppin. It was produced here in the lovely Blue Orchid Room by David Milligan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice Christmas from the Frantics and CBC. Goodbye, everybody.